Hey guys, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a cool little Christmas themed game called Christmas Lights. Christmas Lights is a two to six player game where players are playing their cards without looking at them, Hanabi style, trying to, you know, have other people give them clues as to what's in their hand to fulfill these patterns that they're trying to get their Christmas light bulbs in. They're gonna do that through a few different types of actions each turn, and the first person that complete both of their pattern cards is the winner. That's pretty much the game. Let's go down to the table and see how it plays. All right, so here's a game of Christmas Lights almost all the way set up for three players. So let me go over this setup really quickly. Um, each player is going to be dealt two patterns, which are gonna look something like this. It's gonna show the way that you wanna get your Christmas lights played down in front of you, and it can go either this way or that way. Doesn't matter, just has to be, if you're gonna go one way, you have to make sure that you're playing it in the right order. So you have two of those cards. You're going to get five light bulb cards, which I will deal on in a second, and to determine who goes first, you're going to take Santa Claus and a different card based on the number of people, shuffle them, deal them out, whoever gets Santa Claus goes first. So in this this playthrough, this will be Santa, this will be the snowman, this will be Rudolph. And there's also some event cards which will be here. There will be some cards in the Christmas lights deck that make you draw those. So yeah, we may have to flip those. So each person is going to get five light bulbs. Dealing these out real quick. One, one, one. All right. So this game is interesting. It's Hanabi style. So all the cards. Oh, I dealt myself way too many cards. I don't know how to count. So all the cards are going to be faced away from the player. So I'm going to be holding mine looking at that. So this is going to be kind of tough to show on this, but will make do. So in true fashion, I'm gonna be the, the Rudolph player. So I'll be able to see these this player's cards and this player's cards, but not mine. So I'll fan it out and I'll try to simulate not being able to see my cards. So this is how it would look. I can't see mine, but I can see all their, all their cards. So starting player is Santa. So let's look and see what kind of patterns he has here. He's got some cool patterns, all right. So he doesn't know what's in his hand, but looking around, he can see my hand. I'm gonna show you what's in my hand, but not to myself, so I can't see it. So he can see what's in my hand. So he's gonna say, let's see, he knows he needs a pink bulb. So the things you can do on your turn, you can do these four actions on your turn, but they have to be in this order. You don't have to do them all if you don't want to, but you may. So. First thing he's gonna do is action number one, which is swap a card with another player. So he's gonna do that. So he's gonna take this card of his, cause he doesn't know what it is. And he's gonna swap it with this player's card cause he knows he needs pink to start his pattern. And he'll put it here and he'll turn it so he knows that what that card is. Then the second thing he can do is play a card from his hand into his pattern. So he's gonna take this card that he knows what it is and he's gonna play it right like that. So now he has one card played and he's working on this pattern right there. He's starting with the pink light bulb and going this way. Next thing he can do is action number three. Oh, glare, sorry. So he's gonna take a card from the top of the deck and one card from his hand and he can either trade with the player for information of what's in his hand or play that card into his tableau. So let's show you how that works. So he's gonna flip a card, green, and then he'll take one from his hand. Let's see, he's gonna take this one because he doesn't know what it is. All right, so these are the two cards that are up for offer. He's got a green one and a blue one. He doesn't need anything because the only card he can play next is either a broken bulb, which I'll explain when we get to this player's hand, or red. 
So this is neither, if you played it into his hand, you had to discard it because you can't play incorrect cards in the pattern, kind of like a Navi. If you play the wrong card, it's wrong. So he's gonna say, hey, I'll give somebody a card that you need if you can give me some information. So this player looks at their hand. They can use the green one. So they'll say, fine, I can use the green one. I'll say, fine, I can use, I'll take the green one. He's like, okay, cool. So he take, I take the green one, the other one's discarded. When you take it, it has to go on your tableau. So now I'm working on this one or this one because they both have green in the starting space. So I'm working on one of these. So I either need a red or a blue to go next. So now he's gonna say, do I is, or how many, do I have any red cards? And I would say, you do not have any red cards. So they could say, do I have, is this card a purple card or what is this card? And you have to be honest with them and tell them what the answer is. So he'd say, do I have any red cards? And I say, no. Then the last thing he's gonna do in his turn is he's gonna refill his hand up to five. So he'll draw one, flip it out, and then he'll draw two, flip it out, and then he's ready to go. All right, so then it's Frosty's turn. So Frosty's gonna go through these same four steps, so swap one card with any card from another player. So let's see what patterns he's looking at. I'm gonna put these face up so I can see them just for this purpose, because it makes life a little easier when you can see the patterns. Uh, so he wants to start with a yellow, a green, a blue, or a yellow. Okay, so he doesn't know that he has two blues, but he can look at mine and see that I have these. So let's show you guys again what I have in my hand. So I have, he can see that I have a blue in my hand. So he's gonna say, I'm gonna swap with you for a blue. So he's gonna take this blue and he's gonna give me this blue. And then he'll be able to see that he just swapped me for a blue. So, but he didn't know, he had no information. So again, sometimes it's just that I'm gonna turn that sideways because I know it's a blue. Then he's gonna play this card down into his tableau, which I need to put right there. So his tableau is right there. And then he, so he swapped, now he's playing. And then he's gonna do the drawing from the pile and taking one out of his hand. So he's gonna flip. So he knows he needs red from this pattern, but he'll also throw this one out because he doesn't know what it is. All right, so let me explain what the broken light bulb does. The broken light bulb is basically gonna be like a placeholder in your set. So say I had a broken light bulb and I couldn't get a blue or a red. I can place this here. Then I can continue playing as if I had the right color there. But in order to get rid of that, I have to play either the blue or the red on top of it to fix the light bulb. And then I can keep going. But it doesn't. it's a way to play without playing in order, which is kind of nice. So he knows he needs red, so he's uh, he's not gonna say, ah, I'm just gonna take this myself, play it, because you can either trade information or play it in your tableau. So he's gonna play it in his tableau. So he's working on this one right here. Then, last thing he's gonna do, refill his hand up to five cards. All right, so now it's my turn. So I know I have a blue card, and I don't know what else I have in my hand, but everybody else does and you guys do. All right, so I'm not supposed to know it's in my hand, but I'm gonna show you a couple of different things and I'm gonna play them so we can see them. So plugs, plugs are used after you complete your first pattern, you'll get rid of all the cards. In order to start your second pattern, you have to play a plug. So you're gonna plug your first string of lights into your second string of lights. And this card, I'll put these back in order. This card, if I play this either to my tableau, if I think it's a, a light that I need, or if I play it during the flip one from the deck, flip one from my hand, I'm drawing an event card. So I'm gonna do that this round, just so we can see how that works. All right, so I don't know what I wanna trade. Let's see if there's any cards here that I need. I need blue or red. So I know he has a blue, so I'm gonna trade with Frosty. I'm gonna trade the blue, take the blue, and put it in my hand. Oh wait, I already know I have a blue, so never mind. I'm not gonna do that. So I have a blue. What else do I need? Yellow. I need a yellow. So I'll trade for a yellow. I'm gonna put it here, and I'm gonna turn, turn it, and I'm gonna give this person this card. And now I know that I have a blue and a yellow, and I know I need to play my blue, so I'm gonna play this blue down. 
I know this is yellow for next turn, so I'm gonna play this card on my next turn. Then I'm going to play, I'm gonna do number three, which is flip one and reveal one. So I'm gonna play this and I'm gonna do this. So now I get to draw an event card. So I come over here, flip this event card, and we'll see what happens. All right, lump of coal. So this is gonna hit me. So active player reveals their current pattern card to other players. So I would flip this card face up so they know that this is what I'm working on and then it'll have a little bit of information. Not super painful, but it does mess with you a little bit. And discard that and then this yellow one. Hey, I need the yellow one. So I'll go ahead and play the yellow one. Not trade it for any information. And then I would draw back up to five and it would be Santa Claus's turn again. So you're gonna keep playing like this until somebody finishes all, both of their patterns, and the first person to do that is the winner. So let me go through this event deck, because I'm gonna show you a little bit of what's in here before we wrap this up. So in this event deck, there's mostly these, which are bubble lights. Bubble lights are basically wild lights. So say I didn't have a yellow, but this was flipped up during the event phase, I could put this right there and it's going to operate as my yellow light. So those cards are amazing. If you can get those, you definitely want those. Um, what else is in here? Power Surge. This is going to make the active player basically end their turn. So it's just kind of a mess you over card. Uh, more bubble lights. Power out. There's a power outage card. All players discard their hand and draw back up to the same number that they had. That's cool, kind of fun. Boxing day, reveal one extra card during the sale phase, which is step three. That's the part where you're flipping one from the deck and playing one from your hand. So you have an extra shot of getting something good. Uh, Christmas Eve. All players can look at one card in their hand. That's really nice. It's good to have information in a game when you can't see your cards. Uh, light switch. This one's really obnoxious. So you can pass your cards to the player on your left, and then basically, if you had cards marked, now it's, you got to start over and remember what your opponents have. Then there's lots of bubble lights, just more bubble lights. So that's it. That is how you play Christmas lights. Um, also, in the game box, there's another book of bonus games. This is gonna show you other games you can play using these cards if you're into it. It's probably, uh, it says there's 11 extra games. So you can just flip through this book and if you get worn out or wanna break from playing the regular game, you can dive in here and play some kind of variant with these cards. So that is how you play Christmas Lights. Let's go up to the top and see what we think about it. So that was Christmas Lights. Uh, let me get started by saying, first I was never a fan of Hanabi. I thought that game was not fun and the cooperative part of it just didn't work well for me. But this one with the same mechanism is far superior. I highly enjoyed this game. It's it's a blast. You can because you, you're having your cards facing your opponents, you have no idea what's in your hand, and then you can see your opponent has a blue card that you need, for example. So say, okay, I'm gonna swap this card with that blue one. Then it flips around, just swap on a blue one with them because you have no idea. That's just a riot. I, th we did it so many times and it just cracks me up. Like, oh, I really need a pink card. In your hand you have four and you don't know it. And then you're the, there's like one opponent that has a pink one. So you take one of your four pink cards, trade it with them for a pink card. Oh, it's hilarious. I love it. Um, the thing that I really enjoy about this game are the events, the bubble lights. The bubble lights are amazing. If you've ever seen a tree with bubble lights, it's incredible. So the fact that bubble lights are wild cards in this makes this amazing but i like also that you may get that boxing day card that's going to let you get an extra card during the the sale phase where you're going to you know flip a card from the deck and pull them from your hand and then either trade with people or put it in your tableau i like that you can swap hands with other people even though that's frustrating just to jazz it up a little bit so whenever you draw one of those event cards you never know what's going to happen there's mostly bubble lights but there's also like five other ones that you never know it's an easy game, it's fun, it's crazy. You just have a great time playing it. It's not difficult, it's super easy to teach. Like, hey, pick your cards up, don't look at them. You get to see everybody else's, you can't see your own. You're gonna do these four things if you want to, but they have to go in this order. You can do two of them, you can do one of them. 
but you have to do them in this order. And all you gotta do is make a pattern of these lights in either way that you want. Whoever does that first twice is the winner. The hard thing to explain are the broken light bulbs and the plugs. And even then, hey, if you can't get the next thing, throw a broken light bulb down. If you get that color you need later, throw it on top, good to go. Super fun game. I like it a lot. It's probably not a game that I would play all the time because again, it's a Christmas theme, but come Christmas time or Thanksgiving time with some family who doesn't play a ton of games, this will definitely be one that I would bust out. So that is Christmas Lights. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and until next time, keep gaming. Mm -hmm.